that's where I get my in. And it's going to be up against Yui Metal on the deli in the green. And then Lee Nook, of course, playing as the English in the orange, immediately going into the racks. So will be God. some cheeky men at arms shenanigans early on. Now, keep in mind, this is one of the sips that is less effective against, right? The men at arms play... Because of the Scholar, they can offset the damage. And although that healing uh, is getting nerfed in the upcoming patch, so you only heal for half while in combat, we're not there yet. Now, this is before February 15th, which means that one or two men at arms alone shouldn't really do much to slow you down. Of course, keep in mind that pulling a Scholar out will delay your tech timing slightly, but considering the amount that Linok is delaying his own timings by going into men at arms, you kind of feel content with that trade. Especially when you consider how long it takes for these men at arms to get in a position to even do anything, right? Like, it's, it's a very long wait. But looks like Yui will be wrapping around the backside. Already scouted where the gold vein is, so that's going to be his play to try and block that out. Now, Yui, if he scouts this early on, he can immediately just push people onto the gold to make sure he's sword, sewed, and booed. But for now, he seems completely unaware. In fact, Yui went for a very kind of condensed scouting. There's a big lesson in that, right? And the, the, the importance of what happened here, right? Lenok immediately just darted across the map. And this is something that everyone should take note of if you want to make these type of men at arms plays. Men at arms plays, or as I call them, baby arms at this stage of the game, um, has always kind of been a gamble because you can't guarantee that your opponent's gold vein is going to be on the right side of the base, as in, you know, whatever side you're aiming for. If you want to alleviate some of the risk associated with this play, Take your scout and immediately head to their base. And keep in mind that, sure, you're going to probably sacrifice some sheep in the process. It's not the most efficient way to travel to pick up sheep. But you're the English, baby. You don't need it. You can easily transition farms if things get rough due to them being so inexpensive for you. So it's really not that crippling to open with a scout play aggressively onto your opponent's side of the map. But now that this has happened, we're going to see what we talked about. The counter is very simple, folks. Wave your arms as quickly as he waves his arms, and you should be fine. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> so gold should be gathered up. Yui will definitely get enough for his tech up. Meanwhile, Linok has now invested 240 resources plus the 150 of the racks. You know, that is almost two-thirds of what he needs for Feudal Age. Does mean that Yui should get a much quicker tech up timing. A little bit troublesome. That's why I do feel that, that these type of plays are a little bit baity. You know, there is an upside in that you're now preventing additional scholars from being built because you're blocking the gold source. So it's not the worst play for Linok to make. You could argue that probably one men at arms was good enough, but if he only committed one, then Yui can still come out and gather gold while healing. When you commit two, that's going to outdo the, the healing, right? Like you're going to do eight damage each compared to the eight heal a second of the Scholar. So you will gradually kill people. So this just guarantees that the gold is going to be locked out. Dome of Faith is going to be the choice. So Yui, optimistically, he'll be able to get back onto that source. But does need to get some troops out to defend with first. And some people are like, well, why didn't you build spears? You know, just men armed, build enough spears, you kind of win. The amount you require to win doesn't feel good especially considering it's a defensive play, not an aggressive play. And then on top of that, if you mass spears, you're just playing into the English hands uh, when they go in for the council hall, as they do like 95% of the games right now on the main server. So he doesn't want to kind of kneecap himself in that regard. Instead, the priority should really be to get probably into archers first and then follow up horsemen. You could do a spearman horseman comp. It really comes down to whether you don't feel that like you've got much wood access, but you've got a lot of food. You know, given the amount of sheep that you got, given the amount of berries, I would say that it's probably more desirable to just play into an archer horseman mass. And that will give you that kind of variance in combat. Right, the horsemen are essentially always going to be the, the kind of dictator of the flow, because obviously Lenox is going to have to react to what the horsemen do. And then your archer should be able to get in close enough to take out any spears defending and also, you know, counteract the lombos as the game goes on. So you open up the stables. Look at the sacred sites as well. Like some of these are, are pretty easy peasy. Especially if you want to play horsemen. One big advantage that Yui's gonna have is because you've got this weird kind of lippany spawn on the sacred sites, where two of them are close together. The third one should be safe to collect at all times. Because if Yui's the only one building horsemen, it's very difficult for Lenor to respond north and south. It's too much ground to cover. So Likely, you're going to see the English player pivot towards defending the south side and kind of accept that there's always going to be a passive trickle of gold in the hands of the Delhi. So the 
Oh, rushing to survival techniques. Where was the de okay? Deer is like it's not their most easily accessible right now, especially if Linux' attention is going to continue on the south side. There is a sneaky spot as the game goes on for you up here, though. I like this. The deer plus berries it kind of plays in that logic we just applied that north side is kind of unattainable for Linux due to his static comp. So if you do realize that Linux starts to play south a lot, then not only can you go up here for the sacred site, but you can also just sneak up here to get the food. Pretty, pretty crafty little figure there from Yui. I love that. We are going to get the archer range follow up. So horseman archers as expected. Other side, Lenok, it's just going to be the cut and dry simple, right? Archers plus spearmen and farms going to be set up as we talked about. No other Civ can get away with this aggro scout play like the English because of the fact that you can just switch into farms. Like you could argue maybe French could kind of do it and then they can plant onto deers instead, but it's a bit more of a coin flip. This is kind of that situation, like, if you think about it, the reason why French can sort of do that aggressive scouting first is that they play knights and they go play pocket ecos. But that's a gamble because if you can't keep aggression, you're going to get sniped out on the deer you go to gather from. The thing with the English is their backup choice is always going to end up being farms in this situation because they don't need to risk it on the deer. They can just play safe at home. It makes them a lot slower, but remember, Lino's goal in this game isn't to inflame himself to a win condition in 10, 15 minutes. It's to ensure that Yui's win condition in the next 10, 15 minutes falls flat. Because if you talk about ceilings for these two sieves, there's no denying that the English can go a lot deeper into the game than with Delhi. Things have chilled out a little bit, but Yui should be moving out for the sacred sites in the next minute. Santi is just a minute away, in fact. Has prepped the blacksmiths, like to see this. Could even think about going for a secondary blacksmith super early. Just gives them the all out counter as quickly as possible against the English Lombos, which is the big thing you're worried about. You have to think about what his players are going to be in this game. Like we said, his, his goal is to kind of delay, prevent his opponent from reaching his timings. You know, you're going to flesh out these farms, but what's your goal then? Well, ideally, Lenok is looking to gradually float towards two farm clusters of eight, and that should get him enough income to kind of start floating the idea of Castle Age. Now, he's not going to rush that because he has to keep pushing units in the meantime. But that should get him sustainable income plus extra, which is what he's aiming for here. On the Delhi side, Yui's goal is to lock in as many of his sacred sites as quickly as possible. And the cool thing about this timing is Lenok is not strong enough to contest this right now. He has to be very careful about how he approaches this. So there should be a lock-in on at least one sacred site for Yui. As we mentioned, that north side should be a freebie as well. Much as I can get the walls up. Nicely done. What's been trying to be a nuisance to the backside? A lot of spears are coming from Lenok though. Love this from Yui. Notice he just spots one or two of the Lombos out on their own. They're going to be easy pickings. Now you're in a situation where Lenok is cut off from reinforcements and has to commit to a fight where he's going to be outnumbered. This is crafty from Yui. Wraps around now with the horsemen. Lombos need to be contested. Spearmen are going to block out though. Lenok shows he doesn't give everything over. Has lost the scouting vision in the area, however. There are enough archers here to push him away. So Lenok going to have to full retreat. Yui, I love the way he's just weaving around these tree lines, right? This is why horsemen are king in Feudal Age. They truly are the STA unit. It's just the way you uncomfortably force your opponent to move. Now, that being said, destroy value, sure, Lenok has an edge there, but what's been achieved by Yui is he's locked in the sacred site. He's going to capture it up now. He's even going to head for the northern one. And this once again kind of delays Lenok's timing. Lee, who is now looking to set up the second farm cluster we talked about. He's going to have to double down. You know, the spears, he's going to need plenty of them. He knows there's going to be more horsemen on the way. The gold safely just being collected by Yui. You have to remember that he's going to be able to trade if he needs to to get additional food or wood. So expect the Delhi surge to continue to up from here. Especially now that he's sneaking far south. So he's looking in both the sacred sites. This is once again another detail to why Lenox going to have to build more melee units, more spears. He's going to need a way of burning through these walls quickly. I love that Yui isn't just resting his laurels. Because Lenox, he's being gluttonous. He's actually heading north. This is an unorthodox play with a static comp. One that Yui should be able to punish in the base of Lee. At least being able to idle out a few villages even if you can't kill them. So notice that just pull away right there, right? It's already been a few seconds. You do this for 10, 15 seconds, it's worth it. 
for the amount of villagers that won't be working. You, in the meantime, will try to sneak away the Skull Ape. Will it even be able to do so? And I believe that Linox is revealing a little bit too much about where his comp is right now. Right? The fact that he didn't snipe that Scholar tells Yui that the Longbows are not there. So he could either try to just find them in the interim, or he can go back into the base. And we could gamble and find the premium shot onto the Longbows, or he could just do this again. Like we said, over time, this is going to add up. Even snipes one of the villagers this time. This again, I'm just looking at time muscle. Was it 47 they started to pull back? He almost gets 10 seconds out of it. Well, at least 10 seconds. He's not really losing units for it. And all the while behind this, sacred sites are being captured. It does actually feel like Linux has to get aggressive here. Right now, he's just trying to reacting to everything, as English players usually do. But in this situation against the Delhi, we've seen it historically. It doesn't work to just react. You have to be proactive. And with a spawn like this, with the north and south side sacred sites, it's very difficult to react efficiently. Sneaking. Looks like one village is going to be sniped. Now, Yui didn't go in for textiles, which is a little bit of a mistake there. I mean, typically you want to get it. It's almost always worth it, folks. It only takes 17 seconds. That's less than it takes to produce a villager. If it protects one, it's worth it. But Yui, kind of fine to sacrifice one or two because he's making the big boy plays. He's going up with a compound of defender. Leenok. Well, he's nowhere near ready. He continues to invest and militarily they're neck and neck, but most of it is not in a position where Leenok can punish Yui for this. If Leenok heads for the sacred sites instead of the base, he won't be in position to catch Yui with his hand in the cookie jar. Yui might even be able to snipe out a bunch of Lombos once again in the interim. Like, I'm looking back at base and I'm getting very worried at the fact that Leenok doesn't have any spim in there to defend. So his horsemen could just move in chunk at the longbows, take out a few villages and leave before the men arms do anything of substance. But Linog is heavily investing in the men arms now. Cool. Yui's not going to be weak with this tech up. Like you're seeing this, right? Like eight and now 10 villages. He's leaving plenty of room to keep gathering resources. The goal is now when the tech up completes, he'll have a substantial war chest to use and pushing units out. I would expect crossbows to be on the horizon. Instead, actually, it looks like it's going to be a lot of men-at-arms. Interesting choice here. But considering that Lenok has no way of quickly rushing Castle Age, he is going to be at disadvantage. That's men-at-arms on the way. What a surprising play here. And Lenok, well, he's read this perfectly. He understands that he just assaulted on the front side, so where else would Yui get resources? It has to be north. Just going to sneak in there. And, well... Yui, by the time he realizes what's here, he's going to be punished once again for the fact he doesn't have textiles. I, I, I say that. Oh, lean on. <laughs> Had the Lombos not attacked the mill, he would have been punished for not having textiles. But instead, he's going to get away with this one. <laughs> oh, it's so annoying when that happens. There is a snipe on the south side, though. It looks like three villages going down. So heavy damage. Leverage on both sides. Now, keep in mind, Yui doesn't have much food in reserve. And because you're going into mass men at arms, there is a high premium for that. 100 food each. Which is why he's only up to six. And that's just not going to cut it. He needs to probably get up to about 12 to feel comfortable. He's also superior to Lenox, but he could be superior and then some. Can't be outnumbered. Will they push back on both sides? This counterattack incoming. Looks like the Skull's going to be sniped out trying to return the Relic. But in some ways, you're happy with that if you're Yui, right? Because instead of actually attacking any of your front units, they all remain healthy. In fairness, Lombos wouldn't do that much damage against Horsemen, but still, substantial losses for Yui. Uh, for Lenok, rather. And Lenok, he has gone three clusters now, so he will be able to tech up in probably the next 20 seconds. But at what cost? How high the price is going to have to pay? Because there's a lot of archers and a lot of men-at-arms coming out from Yui. In fact, he's even adding in Lancers now. Very open battlefield, remember. Lenok didn't actually wall himself in at all. And he's going for the King's Palace. So, although we have some sort of garrison point, he's also going to have a lot of exposed eco still. Looking at the way things are playing out, still has one sacred site on the south side. Probably can recap the north. And has got relics incoming. In fact, three more on the way home. I think gold's not going to be a problem for Yui. And as long as he can kind of be, keep the tempo just outside of his base, he'll have access to food. But he needs to collect his forces together. Right now, send them in one by one. The men at arms are not going to do enough. But the men at arms can easily be whittled away out, as you'll see from Lombos. Lenok. Planet MAA to protect him. Now, you need to wipe these out quick if you're Yui. Remember, they're going to be able to be upgraded soon. 
The extra armor clad, they'll be the ones winning fights. Remember, this is a compound of the defender build, so Delhi do not have access to the home blades. So mass men at arms long term as a strategy is not desirable for Yui. Leenok continue to back away. His men at arms have been mostly cleaned up, but has kept the tide away. Awesome in the meantime from Yui are gonna make their way into the back line. But limited damage likely to be done here. Only a few horsemen, baby horsemen, in fact. They never got upgraded into cast laser units. Yui, Yui, Yui. What is the play next? Yui, what could you do that wouldn't look Yui? Keep drops kind of makes sense, but like, where are you going to drop them for premium value here? I, I think Yui's missing the window at this rate. Like, it's up to 17 men at arms, but Linux should ha be able to counter, right? You just get your own men at arms now, you beef them up. They're better than what Yui has. I wouldn't even be surprised if he added a few crossbows behind this. I mean, uh, this could get very uncomfortable for the Delhi in the next two minutes. He doesn't actually have a way in. That's the crazy part. Like, Linox's base looks like it's wide open, but it takes you too long to weave through. And the Lombos can start a step back. You then also got to consider not only the extra armor the men at arms the English have, it's also the attacks we buff on the defensive. And it's kind of crazy. It feels like you wanted home blades in this game. It feels like maybe you is expecting a different style to play out here than actually did. Flash will begin. Just a few men at arms to keep the green ones at bay. This feels like mostly a throwaway come from Yui just to buy time for another transition. Longbows in this quantity with their upgrades, silver hats achieved. They're good enough to cut through. I'm getting a little bit worried that Yui doesn't have uh, anything in the cold and debris here. I mean, he's going for the keep drop, which makes sense if you have a sacred site timer ticking down that you're protecting, but he, he doesn't have this. You're also up against English that has free farm clusters already set up. You know, they're kind of layered to go late into the game and you're not. And also every minute that passes that you don't do some damage to their eco, it's scaling past yours, right? It's double TC after all. Yeah, honestly, I think it's kind of weird because usually when you get to this stage in Castle Age, like Mass Men Arm starts to kind of like, eh, why are you doing it? But even Leonard doing it now feels good, right? You can have the Lombos to count the crossbows that come from Yui, and then your own Men at Arms will reign supreme in the main battle. In fact, I love the fact that he even found a way to get crossbows in there. Some of the English players don't do much, but ever since they've been playing on the test server, players have realized that they changed the Council Hall. Crossbows do feel damn good. So finding a way of affording it in your economy Early on in Castle Age, definitely pays off. And once again, just so many units thrown away by Yui. He's buying time, but once again, it's a case of like, what are you buying time for here, right? You gathered all the stone required. Where did you drop the keep? Did he go for a keep drop on? Am I blind? Wait, what? What? How did he sneak? If he can actually chain a network of keeps here, this is big. But it's a big ask. And he needs a lot of time. In the meantime, Lenok is trying to milk him on that regard. Make sure he doesn't get the time. Maganels have been forced out. So we we'll need a counter to that siege. You know, one of the weakest of the English is there. One of the weaker shifts to transition into siege. Especially when they haven't got a keep. We can make it easier to also get into that network of Citadel. Something that is definitely lacking from Lenok. In fact, with this... Much in terms of eco, you'd think he would be starting to move on the stone, but yet to even consider it. Sacred Sight's now locked in, so timer does begin. Villa's Fortress is, is being prepped a little while off, but Mosk is going to be there, so Wi Fi will be given over. And he's going to yank that stone away, so that'll be enough stone once he's drained it to, to drop two keeps. Almost three, in fact. So this actually could be a big play if he wraps in. North. I don't think you want to go south here. Like, south is good for protecting your sacred sites, but it doesn't pressure the base of Lenok. You, know, you only target housing with that play. Actually, Yui, he's trying to sneak around, but unfortunate timing. So, I, wait, what? Did they see? Did, did, they, did they see? I don't think they saw. <gasps> oh, Lenok didn't see. He got distracted, so looks like Yui is going to get to have his cake and eat it here. Yui, who is somewhat stabilizing in the center. These Maganels continue to hold Lenok hostage, and he's yet to make a commitment to a counter. 
Not only that, but Lenok still on the offensive. Butchers the villagers out in the deer. Will make his way into the back side of the base. Now, this wood line is very far away from safety. Damn, a danger point for Yui to worry about. Ecos just being blocked out. All pocket Ecos that Yui had are no longer going to be his. Lenok now with a mass forward. Enough men at arms to clean up. There's no way the Maganels can get away from this. So Lombo should be able to chase down and cut down those crossbows. Mangoes being targeted, but the repairs coming out from Yui will save the day. Keeps the mangoes alive, continues through, and now butchers the man at arms that are chasing. Crossbows holding out. Great play there by Yui to minimize damage. And now the commitment over the top. Yui coming in with even more villagers. He knows he's got advantage now. He ignores the longbows back at home. A few men at arms to keep them busy. He's trying to go for the jugular. Lenok needs to prep an army to defend fast. An aggressive keep drop on the way. Yui, he knows this is do or die. The longer he waits, the worse it gets. Still no textiles though. Yui does not like his peasants. Maganel continues to push Lee not back. This castle should be going up. Lee now only prepping the Springle counter. You have to wonder what if he had it sooner. Could he have had it sooner? Shoulda, woulda, coulda's don't matter here. What matters is what is happening. And what is happening is Yui's beginning to set up that Magano line. Still harvesting the stone as he goes, so he could fully encapsulate the base at this rate. Now, sacred sites are being capped, or decapped rather, so he won't be able to win off that condition. And sure, you can talk to me about the villager count, but we do have to remember that Yui has had two sacred sites for a long time, has got five relics. He's actually not that far behind Lee Nox's villager count when you equate these details in. Awesome going up more offensive i'm surprised he went for this one it doesn't really block out much but in fairness it is a staging point to delete the tc i don't mention all these houses right like Lenok is in an awkward situation with his housing if you take out all these he's gonna end up pop blocked Lombos, in the meantime have somehow stood their ground outside the delhi base all this time but they haven't really found much to pick off in fact if i'm not Mistaken, I think Yui's probably just going to convert to a forward base entirely at this rate. Keep set up though, and Yui in a very strong position. Lenok now trying to get the counter into the trebuchets. Trebuchets that will have the attack speed buffer, considering the castles are in their own base. One thing they will not have though is Network of Citadels. Still no castle for Lenok. No easy way to get it now. He finally had enough. He will look to just chase those Lombos away. He knows he needs more reinforcements. This isn't going to be a quick victory for him. Yui continues to harvest that stone. So we'll have enough for another keep. And I wouldn't be surprised if he wraps east. Because if he wraps east, he gets access to deer. He needs more food. And he also gets access to the fat stack of stone. He needs to be careful of those trebs in the meantime, though. Springles are going to move in. Lenok. Slow to react here. Uh, Lee Nock. That ain't gonna work, bud. Be sniped out. So, will this one the Trebs? And Springwall Trade is still gonna be there for Yui. So, only one Trebuchet in play. That delays the timing of breaking out for Lee. Military Academy is also on the way. So, this is gonna accelerate for Yui. Who's now going into Trebuchets himself. Setting up the farms. Village Fortresses is online, folks. Yui is about to boom back into this game. And Lenok doesn't have much to work with at home. You know, he's got the baby stacks of gold at the back. That's it. He's got a stone outcrop and he's never touched. He's running out of wood. This actually could be over for Lenok soon if he doesn't break out. Remember, this is Castle Age English. This is not the Imperial Age English you're used to seeing just box themselves in and not care about the world. This is colonialism English. They need to get out and actually interact with everyone. They need to take everything from everywhere. They can't just sit at home like pre-Brexit banking. That's simply not an option. Trebs now starting to hit into the town center. The Vanguard of Lombos continue to intercept reinforcements, but they're going to have to intercept a lot here. Keeps might be taken down soon, but still... Yui with a leg to stand on in the area. Repairs have continued, which has negated the ability to build an additional castle in the area. 
Interesting is Trev is focused on that TC. Interesting that he doesn't have a forward line to defend with. Because Lenok is making a move towards the castle. Needs to be careful about intercepting. We'll find himself up in a double castle fire here. We'll get the trebuchet for free, though. The commitment now from Yui. Yui with a very small force here. Mostly siege, in fact. Where the hell's the army? Oh, Yui, no. Not like this. Now, I don't think there's boiling oil on these cars. No, no boiling oil on the castles. So, dives will be successful for Lenok. If you can clean up all the siege, I mean, Yui doesn't really have a leg to stand on at that point. Has Lenok actually done this? I mean, the castle network felt like it was good, right? There was a good container there from Yui, but now... Now he's just being reduced to rubble. Yui losing a substantial amount of his military might and his eco that he was starting to reboom on the front line. I mean, these Lombos can move in and kill villagers all day and all night. Still no textiles 26 minutes into a daily game. Maganel will save the day, though. It's mainly Lombos left, and the Maganel could actually just turn this again. But Lenok refused to give up. Continues to push forward. Trebuchet is now looking to obliterate the last of the Ford Castles. And I've got to say, I think Lenok has done it. He's broken the back of the beast. Yui, the containment has failed. Lenok has a great economy at this stage. A decent-sized military force. Enough trebuchets to now come and end the game. Heck, Lenok could even sit back and go to Imperial Age. I, I think Yui got incredibly gluttonous with his eco there. Really needed to find a way of going onto maybe the deer to the south side instead of setting up farms and putting that extra wood, those extra resources into work elsewhere. The lack of military killed him here. I mean, if he had maybe an extra 10 crossbows there, 20 crossbows even, he definitely holds. But lacked what he needed. And now the game has fully swung about. I love watching scholars move this fast. It's like they're panicking, like, we're all going to die. But you're going to die faster because I can move away. And Yui feels it as well. Doesn't hang around. Lee Nock holds on, threads the needle perfectly, and gets out of a jam to make sure that it's not going to be another win for a Delhi player.